It's not just about Plato's case, it's just about, I could say about the whole book Republic or even about the whole field of philosophy itself. But you brought up Manicky Hall. When he's talking about Atlantis, that ideal land, whether it's in the East or West, they, well, he believes it's in the West, but still, for that to be a utopia, there would have to be justice. There is also, of course, the very definite possibility that these great temples, variously located, were never actually cities, that they were universities or schools ancient sacred site, always honored as a sacred site. What the building was originally intended for must cause considerable thought, unless we again assume that it was copied from one of the sacred structures of the ancient Atlantean Empire. It's a line energy. It's a, grid, it's, a, it's a grid that goes across the world. That's part of the geometry as well. And also when you get ley lines that cross, intersect, they say you get a vortex. Some people think Mecca is the center of the world, but that's a vortex. That's why they go round around the the Kaaba, which is not a that, that thing was created before Islam existed. That it had a meaning deep and mysterious for these people, a meaning which perhaps rooted in their religion, in their spiritual conviction, and was used in connection with the initiatory rites by means of which their knowledge was transmitted. When we talk about geometry, ley line energy is, is the first thing because you talked about how they put a fort or a fort just in a specific location. Right. It has to do with, I think those are probably, when you get a, a, a ley line vortex, especially when they intersect, that's really when you put, you know, like a fort or a religious, you know, cathedral, temple, or it could be a, a palace. Now they put stadiums on them, sports stadiums are on ley lines. There is a well-established report that Plato was initiated in the Great Pyramid. Yet at the time of Plato, there was no visible entrance. Therefore, the such entrance had to have been through some subterranean connection between the pyramid and other structures. Rumors of such a connection have long endured, but the connection has not yet been clearly identified. But this does not mean that it did not exist. New Orleans on the same ley line as Washington, D.C., uh, New York City, Philadelphia, Boston. And if you go to the south, it actually goes through the pyramid complex of Teotihuacan. Mm -hmm. That's why they built it there. That is why. I mean, if it was a marsh, no matter, it would not have mattered if it was even worse than it is. I can't imagine it being any worse than it is place to build a city. They were always going to build it there because of that ley line. Right, right. I, I think it also goes to, through Stonehenge. I don't doubt that at all. I don't doubt that at all. I have seen ley line energy make the Star David over the United States. That's crazy to me. That's oh yeah, crazy. that's a, that's a, that's sacred geometry as well. But the Star of David, that's yeah. That's, I mean, they call it that. I also see the uh, the Star of David in the middle has a has a hexagon, and that's that's on the northern the North Pole of Saturn. Mm -hmm. You've seen that the, the the hexagon on the North Pole of Saturn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's sacred geometry. So yeah, that's <laughs> that's part yeah. of it too. Yeah. So well, in ancient Egypt, the architect is uh, Ta or Ptah. Yeah, Ptah. Yeah. I say it. Ptah is yeah. the sacred architect. I think that us all coming together and trying to figure it out, we're going to know the truth. I know we're going to know the truth. And the base is is sacred geometry, and I think sacred geometry has been hidden in gematria. I do. Because it's a G, geometry, gematria, God. What's some other G words that are pretty... G. But they don't... I think they have many meanings. And for some of them, I just, I just kept secret. There's some who believe that St. Germain is a divine kind of godly figure. St. Yeah, Germain. Kind of like, like a reincarnation of both or Tahuti and yeah, yeah. Uh, Hermes Trismegistus. I don't remember where I heard it from, but I heard that each symbol has seven different meanings, each symbol. And we we only know a very few of a very few, you know, there is, you know, another seven to have seven meanings. And this come from someone I believe that was in the Mason. I don't remember his name. I would have to go look it up. I'll probably throw it in there on the video, though.
with symbols, there are always multiple levels, up to seven different levels of interpretation with every particular symbol. Oh, Lord. Mm. It's so deep, Rambo. I don't think we can cover it all tonight, even just Plato's cave. Like, yeah. Do you think we can? <laughs> I don't think we can. Because... Did you do a decipher on the um on the, the name cave? See, for this part, I'd have to explain first what gematria is. Most people don't know what gematria is. And for them to understand this, they have to understand what is gematria. So I'll explain what gematria is a system of converting letters into numbers and the letters that make up a word or phrase, depending on the cipher which is used, will attribute specific value to each letter of the alphabet. And a phrase or a sentence or a word or a name will have a numerical value, which is derived from adding the values of each letter that makes up that word, according to a specific cipher. There are multiple ciphers in Gematria. This, the one practice that has embraced this the most, where it's most understood is is Kabbalah. Gematria is unknown to almost everybody. And typically the few people you'll meet who know what it is will be Jewish. It's most commonly used with the Hebrew alphabet, but it's also in Greek, they call it isopsophy. That's Greek Gematria. And uh, one of the misleading comments that they make is that it does not apply to English. It only applies to Hebrew and Greek. Well, it does apply to English and it can be demonstrated it applies to English. And it's Religious texts, Bible, Shakespeare, they don't randomly use headlines. They pick specific phrases so it can add up to a specific value. When a word or phrase has a specific number value, that number value becomes a code. It can become a code. So, uh, for example, the word flood can have a value of 52. So 52 becomes a code for flood. And you'll see other names can be used to covertly refer to a flood. But the way you'll know that is if you do gematria on the name and find the value of that name, it'll sum to 52 and it'll be involved in a, a flood story, a water story. So there are code numbers that develop. And what I've discovered is there's a definitive set of code numbers in gematria for the field of mind control. And the four basic ciphers are very easy to learn. It's not complicated at all. But if the it's called simple gematria, is it's the easiest cipher. That's why it's called simple. It's simple. There are 26 letters in the alphabet, alphabet A through Z. Each letter has a value based on its order in the alphabet. A is the first, so it has a value of one. B is the second, has a value of two, all through to Z, which is uh, the 26. So Z is a value of 26. Then there's reverse. You always reverse things. That's always look at reversals as well. Always. You never neglect that. The reverse cipher would be starting with Z. Z has a value of one. And then Y has a value of two. And the last letter in reverse would be A, which is 26. So that's that cipher. And then there's the Pythagorean cipher, which is the same. A through Z, 1 through 26, except it only has single digit values. You have a, v a visual of the chart, the letter number attributions, it's very clear. Mm -hmm. But A, A through 9 was the first single digit numbers, or A through I. But J is a tenth letter, that's double digits. So in Pythagorean, which is reduction, you want to reduce it to single digits. And you do using numerology. 10 gets reduced to, you add the digits of 10, 1 plus 0, you get 1. 26 gets reduced to eight. Two plus six is eight. That's how you reduce it. And then everything has a single digit value. Now mm -hmm. S is interesting because you have to do it twice. S is the 19th letter. One plus nine is 10. That's still a double digit number. So you have to do it twice. One plus zero equals one. So S equals one. That's the Pythagorean. And that's what's A through Z. And you have to reverse that as well. Mm -hmm. Where Z is one and then A is the last one. 26, two plus six. So Simple ciphers of English Gematria. There are other important ciphers like the Latin cipher where they use the way the alphabet was uh, developed in the English language. Like initially there was no J. So J came later, uh, came later and the letter Y. Their value would be based on the order in which they were added to the alphabet. So that's, but it's an important cipher. That's Latin. <laughs>